Good morning, everybody. I'm Wendy Nystrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice. Today's guest is Ms. Elena Maximovich. She is the founder of Weather Trade Net, where data is the new gold. So welcome to the show, Elena. Thank you, Wendy, for having me today. Of course. Now, you, you started Weather Trade Net during COVID. You kind of had this life change where you wanted to help people. And being a coder and a data gatherer, that's a very important role for everything we're facing right now with climate change. Uh, so the coder, it was the necessity uh, because uh, climate data uh, is uh, collected every day uh, yes. since um, 100 years already. So to process this uh, data, to get to extract the information from satellite data, from observations, from um, shipping uh, information from uh, ships uh, offshore, um, you have no choice. You have to code. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, it's a it's a uh, it's an important mission. I consider it seriously, and uh, also I see um, a lot of demand for this type of uh, information. And you're, you're, I mean, you did, you know, touch on, it's a massive amount of data. This is mm -hmm. a lot of information and you're taking it and you're mm -hmm. basically digesting it and translating mm -hmm. it into useful information for corporations. Who are your target companies that would benefit from this? Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, company, uh, any governmental um, uh, organization decision makers uh, so it's it's not only for business it's also for uh, community planning for adaptation mitigation so it's it's very uh, it has very wide application uh, for um, for yes for forward-looking agricultural restructuring maybe also because uh, as we see for example this year that uh, there will, were uh, heavy droughts in um, in Europe and yeah. uh, uh, these droughts they will be more and more repetitive in future so the the uh, the the agriculture should be adapting also the transport uh, the supply chain so it it will uh, impact everything so yes it's uh, it's not only about business it's about the uh, logic structuring and yes we need to adapt it's climate change is happening so we we just have to adapt yes and what you're doing is you're creating basically risk profiles for people so they can plan in the future. So as you said, with agriculture, yes, certain areas are getting hotter and drier. Other areas are getting flooded mm -hmm. and monsoonal mm -hmm. weather is coming in. Mm -hmm. So they need to learn to adapt and kind of see in the future, which is, I guess, the data that you're providing. They can have that foresight to adapt. Exactly. Yeah. So the global um, warming, it's not about, you know, you hear uh, very frequently two degrees, uh, 1.5. It's not about the flat increase everywhere by two degrees. Uh, it uh, and maybe it's not even about exactly the temperature. It's the amount of energy captured by the atmosphere and how this energy is used. This is another story because this energy is used to melt the ice, to melt Greenland to um, rise the sea level and also to increase the evaporation. What means increased evaporation means more rainfall in certain areas. And typically the, the areas where the evaporation happens, it's not the same area where it will the, where the precipitation will happen. So the more active uh, evaporation in certain areas will induce more storms and uh, more extreme rainfall. It's, uh, and this is what we are observing. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a dramatic shift in, mm -hmm. you know, not only, you know, with climate change, but we're seeing a dramatic shift in our weather patterns and with jet streams and, you know, the basically warming of the oceans and dumping water one place is evaporating other places. When you and I first spoke, we talked about the insurance aspect. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies are struggling with how to properly assess their risk, whether a place will be flooded or wildfire. And this data could be used to help them profile certain regions. Yes. Uh, so in even it's, uh, I would say that insurance companies are the first to understand the interest, the business interest of this type of data. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is uh, this is definitely their their business, their story. Um, uh, so insurance companies, they uh, they are professional risk managers. Uh, but their mission is not to save the planet. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a business uh, as uh, other businesses. So they uh, hedge the risk uh, where this risk exists. And uh, 
um, they also uh, consider certain areas as uh, uninsurable. So the, so the the areas where they will not be interested to hedge the risk because if it happens, uh, for example, if um, uh, you want the insurance for uh, at least if there is more than one hurricane, you want to have a payoff. But if in this region, by definition, there are more than three, an insurance company will not provide the, uh, the hedging. So um, insurance companies, they are very helpful in risk management for governments. It's very important to uh, work uh, together with the insurance companies so that the government, they back also, they, uh, so, so they, yeah. there is a governmental fund for insurance companies so that uh, they are not uh, completely ruined. Uh, because This is what happens, that they lose hundreds of millions a year on um, weather-based insurance. And uh, this, is, uh, this is important also for insurance companies to have the support from governments and the support from uh, local administration, from communities, so that they also take measures and they also, uh, for example, uh, they support uh, 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 in Mexico, I, I do like a lot, the, the, uh, the federal government and the regional government, they uh, uh, support farmers uh, to buy the insurance. Uh, so then this is, this is a very smart uh, uh, step forward uh, so that um, there is a it's a smart way of um, managing the risk in advance, not uh, not waiting that something happens, but thinking a little bit in advance. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, when talking about you know risk profiling, the insurance aspect, you are absolutely right. Insurance companies are hemorrhaging money with respect to property loss as a result of weather-related perils, and with data like yours, they could actually mitigate those risks, stopping yes. them before they start working with local entities, working with individuals. So when you do live in an area that's going to be flood prone or fire prone, drought prone, they will have that foresight to act before mm -hmm. the loss happens. Yes. And that will save billions, if not mm -hmm. trillions of dollars mm -hmm. in forecasted loss. Yes. And, and uh, uh, so also for governments, it's important to understand the, um, the prices behind. So insurance companies, they also help to price the risk yeah. Uh, so the, for governments, it's uh, also a huge support to have this information, uh, to have this quantitative uh, information that every two years we will lose that much and every five years this much. <laughs> and this is very, you know, straightforward way of approaching the, the problem. Um, the uh, challenge of this um, climate change uh, and risk mitigation and assessment is that uh, so uh, basically, the, t the typical approach for, to the risk is that you have time series in the past, and based on this information, you can train the model, statistical model, to say, okay, how many uh, of such situations I will have in future. The challenge with the climate change is that it's a regime shift. Uh, mm -hmm. It means that uh, there will be new events which mm, have never been observed before, and they uh, they could happen. So, for example, in Yemen and Oman, there could be floods. Uh, there could be more floods, which never, uh, let's say, during past 50 years, they didn't happen, but they will happen in the future. So, so this mm -hmm. type of things, which is a uh, new area. Uh, so the, it, it is not even about natural catastrophe, because, again, natural catastrophes is... is uh, when you're modeling something that you uh, have observed already with the with the climate change, it's something new. It's a, it's a new regime. It's a new state of uh, uh, of climate, and uh, there will be black swans that will happen. And uh, yeah. uh, in the areas where it was, it is completely unexpected. So this is the biggest challenge in the story of uh, risk management. Yes. Yeah, and that this kind of information you're providing, again, it's a massive amount of data that you're getting from multiple resources. And many people aren't using that amount of big data that you are, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I mean, you are really kind of taking everything and condensing it to something usable. Um, how can people find you? How can people work with you or, or use your services? 
Thank you, thank you. So, um, so uh, website Weather Trade Net. <laughs> so I'm very present also on LinkedIn, and I'm making also YouTube videos uh, for yes. explaining how it's a short, short one, so three, six minutes. Uh, the tutorials, because in fact, the this climate risk management is a new field. Uh, this type of data is. Um, so originally, it's a big volume of the data, uh, but uh, our mission is to reduce it to exactly the volume that is manageable for companies. Yeah. So that uh, they, they don't need hourly temperatures, but they need the information how many heat waves they had in the past and last decade and how many heat waves they should expect next decade. So this is the information they're, they, they're working with. So we, we reduce, our mission is to reduce big volumes of data into usable format, into usable uh, size, uh, and uh, to provide it uh, to companies and to governments also so that they could uh, superpose it with their financial information, with the, with the, uh, with the planning, with the uh, mitigation adaptation planning, so that they uh, have aligned uh, uh, mitigation plans. Yeah, everyone nowadays is really focused on their climate action adaptation plans, their mitigation plans, trying to look into the future so they can stop something before it starts or at least be more resilient if it happens. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, the data you're providing, this, the platform you provide is fantastic. I've watched your YouTube videos. You take something very complicated and you make it very understandable, which is a hard thing to do for most people. That, that's a sure <laughs> sign that you understand what you're doing. You can explain it mm -hmm. simply. So I commend you for that because mm -hmm. that's brilliant work you're doing. But um, guys, check out Weather Trade Net. Fabulous stuff. The YouTube videos are great. Go to her YouTube channel. It's short, to the point, easy to follow, and a wealth of information. So Elena, thank you so much for coming today and telling people about what you're working on. Guys, give her a call. Find her. Invest in her. Do what you can. <laughs> thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, very... Uh, it's a very good beginning of a beautiful story. So. It is a beautiful story. You are saving the mm -hmm. world little little by little, saving the world. Little so. by, by little, exactly. Uh, doing something, um, you know, uh, solid. Uh, the, the solid piece, the solid brick. It's a small brick. There are many bricks to build, right? So it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a big uh, structure, but just bringing our small brick with the climate uh, data usable for risk management. Absolutely. And it is usable for risk management, government entities as well. This is awesome. Thank you so much. We will see you soon. Have a wonderful day, folks. I'm Wendy Nystrom with Environmental Social Justice. You take care.